Hello. About a week and a half ago, I made a video on the astrology of George Floyd's death. And in that video, I predicted that the violence, the marches, the demonstrations would not decrease and that we need to be especially concerned about mid-June. Well, it is now mid-June. It's June 15th. Was my forecast correct? Wow. It has proven to be very accurate. I think it was two days ago, violence broke out in Atlanta. A restaurant was burned down. People stopped traffic on a major expressway. The tension has been very, very strong. Also, in the past four or five days, this defund the police movement has gotten very strong where people are saying, you know, we're not going to fund the police to the extent we have in the past. We're going to make some real changes. And this ha is leading to some real changes. So the movement is not subsiding yet. Things have continued to be tense and critical. And I want to go over quickly how I made the forecast and make an additional forecast for when I think the tension will subside and at least the violence will basically end and we'll see the astrological configurations evolve. We're also going to look at a little more detail about the astrology that's involved right now. So it was on June 4th, it was 11 days ago that I uploaded the video and at 28 minutes into that 38 minute video I mentioned the upcoming astrological effects and I want to quote what I said and look into this a little bit more. What I said, I, this is at 30 minutes and 35 seconds into that video. I said, here's what I'm really concerned about. Let's go down to the Saturn 311th Uranus aspect exact in the middle of June. Okay, let's look at it. What it is is that Saturn and Uranus in the sky are 311ths of a circle. This is an idea in vibrational astrology that you can take the distance between any two planets, see what fraction it is, what fraction of a circle. And it happens to be three elevenths, which might seem trivial. Who cares? What would that mean? Well, in vibrational astrology, it's extremely important. That 11 in the denominator means it's an 11 vibration, which is very unstable, very dynamic, very moving. Saturn and Uranus is an unstable combination. This is why I predicted in mid-June, in some parts of the world, you're going to see a noticeable increase in tension. And the United States is typically where this aspect will manifest. So let me, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But first, let's look at a report produced in the Series 3.0 astrology software that shows it. This is the month of June. I showed this in the previous video as well. And it's showing what planetary configurations are occurring in the month of June. And as we scroll down, we see various things going on. Jupiter's two sevenths, Uranus, exact on June 10th, and so on. And here it is, Saturn, 311th Uranus, exact on June 14th, lasting about three weeks. So right in this time period, things are very vulnerable. And I give an image that comes out to be literally true. Let, let's go back to what I said. Uh, that the uh, 11 vibration is unstable. When Saturn and Uranus are in 11 vibration, things can get very unstable very quickly. What this means is that if any government takes what you might call a strong arm approach, a repressive approach, a dominating approach, if that starts up around mid-June, from about the 7th to the 21st of June, right in that mid-June time period, it's going to be a disaster. People will not stand for it. They will retaliate. It's the throwing rocks through windows kind of thing. Let me just stop right there, because what happened in Atlanta where there was another policeman who shot another person. Uh, demonstrations got very strong in Atlanta, and it happened to be at a uh, fast food restaurant called Wendy's Restaurant, 
is where it occurred. I don't think the restaurant was very much involved, but people started throwing rocks through the windows of Wendy's restaurant. Wow, even though Wendy's is not directly responsible in any way, they did it anyway. And this is what happens when Saturn and Uranus are in 11 vibration. People get out of harmony. They get uh, in a disrupted state very easily. They don't have to, but it frequently happens. And there it is, literally, rocks through the windows. Exactly what I explained. And, uh, and I say here, there's a time when a strong arm approach can work. It will not work in mid-June. So any kind of strong, dominant action by authorities triggers people. So in the case of uh, the killing of the person in Atlanta, some people are saying, well, it's not as conspicuously wrong as what happened to George Floyd. I think it's, it's clearly not on the same level of extreme behavior, but it doesn't matter. Um, it's strong enough, it's going to trigger people. This is what I saw coming. And even before that event in Atlanta where another person was killed by a policeman, uh, there was already the growing defund the police movement. So as predicted, the tension built up towards mid-June. And I'm gonna make another prediction and we'll see if the next prediction also comes true. So, um, so this just repeats what I just said. I'm gonna go on to the next slide. Uh, and this also repeats what I've been talking about. Even without obvious provocation, people are reducing funds to the police, etc. Why is this, now here's an important point that I did not get to in, in the other video. Why is this call for freedom and spirit of rebellion? That's what Saturn in 11 vibration, like a 311s aspect to Uranus does. It's like a call for freedom, a spirit of rebellion appears in mid-June. And typically it will develop in the United States. So the question is, why is this call for freedom and this spirit of rebellion against any kind of perceived oppression happening in the United States and not everywhere else? As I mentioned in the video on George Floyd's death, there are many cosmic frequencies in effect at any time. So there's lots of cosmic frequencies, lots of aspects, planetary vibrations going on, and different people will respond to different ones. But somebody is going to respond to any powerful frequency that's out there. And Saturn 311's Uranus is a clear, strong signal that I want to be free. I will rebel. Just get off my back. And that's going to increase the tension of what's going on in these marches and demonstrations and protests about the killing of George Floyd. Now, from Le referring to the last paragraph here, from observing other 11 vibration configurations, strong 11 vibration configurations in the past, what we know, what I know, is that the United States is highly reactive to 11 vibration. It's an observation. So this obviously is not the first time that there's a strong 11 vibration thing going on in the sky. It's happened lots of times before. And we can go back and see what happened socially, what, what things are happening. And in the United States, whenever there's strong 11 vibration, there is disruption. That's what happened in the late 60s. The late 60s had very strong 11 vibration. I talk about that in some other videos. And obviously, the 60s was a rebellious, wild time in the United States and in many other places. So why is the United States so reactive to the 11 vibration? I'm not completely certain why it is. From observation, we know that it is. It makes sense. The, the United States, among other things, is a symbol of freedom, of uh, you know, being able to do what you want, and so on. Uh, so, but I'm, 
So it makes sense. I'm not entirely sure. One idea is that maybe it has something to do with the birth chart of the United States. So every country, every state, every city has a birth chart, just like a person. There are many problems with this. One of the problems is there can be questions about when a country really begins. And there are a lot of debates about when the United States is born. And some people uh, use multiple charts. There's like several beginning points. One of the most popular birth charts for the United States is July 4, 1776. And a time of around 4.30 p.m. is often used. Uh, so just for fun, just for curiosity, I entered the birth data for that time. And I pulled up the 11 vibration chart. And let me show you what we see. So here is the birth chart for the United States. July 4, 1776, 4.30 p.m. Local time in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's a very commonly used chart. I'm not 100% convinced it's accurate, but what it shows in the 11 vibration is very interesting. Here's what we call the 11th harmonic chart. Let me, yeah, let me show you in this wheel style, which is easier to see if the planet clips are larger and so on. And it is a strong chart. There's a Mercury Mars opposition to Moon. Strong chart means there's many aspects or midpoints or four planet configurations that we call isotraps. So there's strong planetary configurations. It's strong. It's not uh, extraordinarily strong. A, a very strong would have four or five planets in the same color, like red, all connected with thick lines or possibly other configurations, midpoint patterns. This is strong, but there's one thing very interesting. The sun at 26 Taurus 16 is trying Mercury 26 Virgo 19, only a three minute orb. But when there's an aspect that's almost exact, is virtually exact, only a three minute orb, we can go to a higher frequency that shows the details of that vibration. So a trine is one third of a circle. We multiply 11 times three and we look at the 33 vibration. So this is a little more advanced vibrational astrology of how we go in and analyze these frequencies. So let me say it again. If there's an aspect that's almost exact in a vibrational chart, in this case, Sun trying Mercury, only a three minute orb, we can take the vibration of that aspect, which is three, one third, multiply it by the vibration we're looking at, 11, we get 33. And we look at the 33 vibration chart. Here it is. Let me make it a prettier wheel, a wheel that's easier for you to see. Okay, there it is. This is the 33 vibration. What happens is Sun and Mercury turn into a conjunction. Now, this is advanced vibrational astrology. If you're not following everything, don't worry about it. The point is this. We're looking at 33 vibration and this is an extremely powerful chart. There are three planets conjunct, Mars, Sun, and Mercury, all trine. Look at those thick trine lines to a strong Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. Five planets very strongly connected. That makes for a strong vibration. So the United States is vibrating to 33. So every person, every country, every state has certain vibrations that are very strong with certain planets. In the case of the United States, one of the strong vibrations, if this birth chart is a valid one, is a Sun, Mercury, Mars, trine Jupiter, Neptune in 33 vibration. 33 means moving, 11 times 3, easily, freely trine quality. Jupiter, Neptune, the most expansive combination of planets. When Jupiter and Neptune get together, the sky is the limit. It's big, it's grand, and it's 
active, trining three other planets in 33 vibrations. This is the grandness, the largeness, the sense of freedom that the United States expanded west into the Wild West, you know, wanted to send uh, rockets to the moon and so on. This, everything's big. Uh, my friend, a friend of mine from, from Germany comes here and says, everything is big in the United States. Your cars are big. Your refrigerator is big. Your roads are big. This kind of grandness and wastefulness and, uh, you know, this positives and negatives, this boastfulness of the United States, sometimes a superficiality, but this outgoing, expansive nature, there it is. And, excuse me, this little headset thing fell off. And it's trying the Sun, Mercury, and Mars. Well, I can go into more detail, but what I want to emphasize is that it appears that this chart from the United States, it's looking like maybe it is valid. Good chance it is because it's so descriptive of the United States. Maybe this is why the United States responds so strongly to any 11 vibration things going on because it connects with the basic quality of the United States character, which has 11, 11 times three. So it's 11 and three mixed together. Okay, so I wanted to show you that, how we can look at charts of uh, countries to better understand what's going on. So the United States is very, very reactive to 11 vibration. And what's going on right now in mid-June 2020 with Saturn and Uranus and 311th Uranus, with Saturn and 311th aspect in Uranus, this feeling of freedom, of, of not being restricted is so strong. And some people are feeling like we've got to rebel, we've got to stop this controlling power. Other people feel like we're already free. We already have so much freedom. People are just complaining and making things up. So you, you get different points of view. But what the astrology does for us is it helps us understand the, the motivation of what's going on to really understand that people feel oppressed. Some people feel afraid of the police and they're feeling like I'm in the country of the free, the land of the free, the Jupiter, Neptune, <laughs> trying Sun, Mercury, Mars in 33 vibration. We should be able to sing in the streets. We should be able to celebrate. We shouldn't have to walk outside and feel afraid or if a police car pulls us over, we feel intimidated. It feels out of spirit with where we should be. Now, what I like to do in these astrological interpretations is focus on the energy. What I believe is not so important. You decide for yourself. I don't want to take a stand. Obviously, I have my opinion. I have my point of view. Everybody does. That's not what's important here. What's really important is that the astrology is revealing what will happen, made it possible for me to predict that this would be a time of tension. We shouldn't be surprised. And it will subside very much by the end of the month. So knowing that, he should give us some understanding and appreciation for what's going on. People really do feel um, controlled. And given the quality of the United States birth chart, which does seem to be accurate, we can see how the dream of the United States is something very different. So, uh, now, when will this end? It will end most likely towards the end of the month. Now, that doesn't mean all protests and every march and everything will end, but the tension will reduce. And there is a hope, a great possibility, that around June 27, there can be at least a partial resolution to the conflict. There can be, there will be, 
people who will raise the bar, you could say, and will say, you know, we can do this. We can make a better police force. Whether you think the police are 99% perfect or 30% perfect or 10%, obviously there's room for improvement. There's room to, to advance, whatever your point of view is. Around June 27th, the vision of a better world takes hold and there should be some optimistic, positive steps. Okay, so let's read how I phrased it here. On June 26th to 28th, there is a possibility of a great sense of hope and resolution. But so far, I do not see enough interest in acknowledging the real high barriers to the United States moving forward to greater levels of opportunity and equality for all. The United States politics, as in some other countries, very polarized and, and not always willing to listen and compromise. So, uh, the motivation for a highly polarized political environment to make real improvements, rather than A, making only minor changes, dismantling things that uh, work well. So, what I'm saying here is uh, that it's difficult to make real changes, obviously, when the political leaders have split themselves into two parties that are fighting against each other. But regardless of that, we have seen some positive developments in the past three weeks since the killing of George Floyd. And around June 27th, we will see some, uh, some advancement and some improvement. Okay, that's my last slide. And let me show you the astrology behind that is that if we go back to this forecast, transit to transit, what's in the sky, as we scroll down, this is the month of June, as we scroll down, you will see a lot of things happening on the 27th. Look at them all. 27, 27, 27, 27. All of these things happening on the 27th, what are they? These are the four planet configurations. Sun-Neptune angle is the same as the Uranus-Jupiter angle. Sun-Uranus, same as Jupiter-Neptune. Sun-Neptune is the same as Uranus-Pluto. Sun-Uranus is the same as Neptune-Pluto. A lot of angular distances are the same. So, you know, I'm going to um, hold on a second here. I'm going to do something. Um, I made a... And, uh, an image, I saved what's happening on that date. And let me see if I can find it very quickly. And if I can, yes, refund the police.png. Sorry about this, a little technical uh, detail. I want to show you this image, and I think I can bring it up very quickly. So just be patient with me, just one second. Uh, There it is. I'm glad I did this to show you this configuration because what I did is I brought it up in the Sirius software and then I saved it and drew in the configuration. And here is the planetary configuration that's happening on June 27. So as it says here in the upper right corner, June 27, 2020, this is done for 12 noon in New York City. What's happening is that the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction has only a 15-minute orb. It's almost exact at 24 degrees Capricorn. Pluto's at 24 Capricorn 10. Jupiter's at 24 Capricorn 15. The angular distance of both Jupiter and Pluto to Neptune is the same as the angular distance of the Sun to Uranus. So you see Uranus there at 9 Taurus, the Sun at 6 Cancer. Those angular distances are the same. And so there's resonance, very strong resonance going on with five planets because Jupiter and Pluto are both involved. This is a very powerful configuration. And what does it mean? It means, well, the Sun, what's actually going to happen 
with these outer planets, Jupiter, Uranus, which is enthusiastic, Jupiter, Neptune, which I just talked about, is expansive and large, Jupiter, Pluto, which feels like things can just become extremely successful. So there's Uranus, Neptune, which is visionary. So there's a huge visionary sensitivity and motivation right around June 27th from this planetary configuration. So this is the interesting thing about vibrational astrology is we're looking at planetary relationships in new ways. They're, we didn't invent it. These ideas have been handed down from various traditions in astrology. We've just synthesized it and organized it and added more to it and developed it. Of course, we're always building on a tradition of ideas. And these resonances are more powerful than if there's just the conjunction in the sky like Jupiter-Pluto. What is it going to do? We know the exact flavor of it. And this big hope and dream and vision and receptivity, and there's no Saturn involved, so there's, there's very little fussiness, you might say, and openness and receptivity. Some good things will happen around June 27th that will help ease the tensions and things will subside and there will be some improvement. Hopefully, somebody or some several people will rise to the occasion because the astrology does not guarantee anything. You'll see the door open. You'll see some very good things happen, but it's up to us. It's up to each and every person to express and develop the potential in the greatest way. So we'll see how well collectively we do, but things will get better around June 27th. There will be some hope. There will be some vision and dream and a sense that progress can be made and hopefully it will last. The, the problem is a month later or two months later, people forget about it again and go back to the old way. It can, we can hold on to it and it can last. It's up to us. But in any case, the tensions will, they will subside probably towards the end of the month. The Saturn Uranus aspect will move out of orb, other things move in and the tone changes. So I hope you find this interesting, my friends. We can see what's building, what's changing, how the mood is moving, and where things are headed, and what our purpose is, what it is that's driving us, and what can be brought out to, to express things in the best possible way. Okay, well, thank you very much for listening, my friends. God bless. Namaste.